are inside the T-Mobile Arena, where in just 48 hours, one of the biggest combat sporting events of the year goes down right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The UFC 264 Trilogy will put an exclamation mark on one of the greatest trilogies in UFC history and ultimately help shape each man's respective legacy. Introducing first, the sport's biggest superstar, the Irish Supernova, who's captured titles in two weight classes and elevated the sport of mixed martial arts to new heights. This is the notorious Conor McGregor. His opponent, a former champion, the pride of Lafayette and winner of six of his last seven fights, including a January knockout win over McGregor, which even the score at one apiece. Please welcome Dustin the Diamond Poirier. What's up, everybody? How are you? Yeah, Dustin, I want to start with you. Uh, Dustin, after that last fight, you know, you said Connor had kind of lost his aura to you. You didn't see that around him anymore. But I wonder, this is an entirely different environment, right? I mean, we're talking sold out, bunch of Irish flags everywhere. Uh, and we know that Connor performs well under the lights. Does the challenge change for you? I know the fight's the same, but with everything that's around it, does the challenge change for you in this one because of this? No, nah, not, not anymore. I am. For me, the aura's not, not there anymore. Very dangerous fighter sitting right here for sure, no doubt, but I see a man, you know, you guys in the crowd, cheer it up, have fun, but I see a man here in front of me that I've, I defeated, and I know I can defeat again. And Dustin, in the cage after that last one, I mean, you know, you were still in the cage and you were already saying trilogy. We got to do this again. We got to do this again. Obviously, it's a huge money fight. But at that moment, when you're still in there, what's going through your head? Is it this is going to be the biggest paycheck I'll ever cash or was there something else about it? It was I knew this was next. Like I, as soon as I got to my hotel room that night, I knew this was next. I've kind of been preparing for this fight since that fight ended. Yeah. 
in all the discussion, I know you've heard it, low kicks, calf kicks, low kicks, calf kicks. When you hear that, do you say, well, yeah, I executed perfectly, or do you say, why are people not giving me credit for everything else I did in that fight? You know, the calf kicks led to shots that, that hands that opened up shots, but that's MMA. There's a lot of different moving parts. That's what it is, you know? If it's not calf kicks, it'll be something else, takedowns or boxing that opens up calf kicks. I can't walk like a forth. dog in that octagon on Saturday night. I guess lastly for me, Dustin, I mean, this is obviously different. It was genuinely last time. It's getting kind of ugly again. Is this getting personal for you at this point? Nah, straight business, man. This is, uh... You're only a little bitch. <laughs> your wife is your husband. <laughs> You're only a little bitch of a thing, a silly little hillbilly. <laughs> Joe Lee's wife. Joe Lee's wife. Joe Lee's wife. Joe Lee's wife. You little bitch of a thing. You used to be a lot better than that, man. The trash talk was a lot better than that. Fucking weak. Thanks, Dustin. Connor, I want to ask you to say, Connor, throughout your career, when something has gone wrong, you've always evaluated it spot on and made the corrections. Right afterwards, you really did point to those low kicks and said how, how you know, dangerous those was. But in the time since, have you seen other issues or other challenges that he presents to you? Is that really all that you need to address here? This is my bread and butter. This is what you know, wakes me up in the morning with fire in my belly, you know? Uh, errors to correct, tactics to prepare for. So I've had a great camp, a great focus on I'm the throwing opponent, dick on kicks the skills. This time. What? Throwing dick kicks this time. Yeah, shoot your mouth, you little fool. I'm gonna dance on your head. Hey, Connor, it's, it's clear that the gentlemanly Connor that was in Abu Dhabi is not here this time around. And, and Dustin's admitted in fight number one, you got in his head. As you're sitting there right now, do you feel that you've been able to get into his head or under his skin again? I'm gonna go through his head, put holes in them and take it off his shoulders. That's the goal here. He's done here. This is it for him. This is the end of the road. Even after that last fight, oh, I don't love this anymore. I don't love doing this. He knew what was coming. He knew the smacks he took. So it's on now. Saturday night he's getting walked around that octagon like a dog and put to sleep. And Connor, just, just one last one for you. I mean, we think about all the things that you've accomplished in your career. I mean, there's certainly there's not a title on the line in this one, but what would a win in this trilogy series mean for you? What, what would this mean as part of your legacy? It's beautiful, another addition, another feather to the cap. It's what I love to do. I love to come in here, you know, defy the odds, do the unthinkable, and, and put on a show. Thank you, Connor. And Dana, just one quick one for you. I know that uh, you were teasing some big numbers and big trends, and, and we're excited about it. As we sit right here, what can you tell us about the status of this pay-per-view and, and where you expect it to end up all time? I'm saying it's the most free buys we've ever had for any fight. So, you know, we expect big numbers to come in that night. If you know you're going to be home on Saturday night and you know you're going to watch the fight, buy it now so you can avoid that. Question for Connor right here. Uh, you walked out, you posed for the crowd, you pulled, it seems like you pulled some of Dustin's hot sauce out and poured it and threw it at him. Why did you feel the need to pour out his hot sauce? It's garbage. Don't have that garbage up on my bleeding stage. Where's the proper 12, the real sauce, the real Irish hot sauce? Dustin, it seems like you want to have something to say. I got a nice bottle of Red Breast 21 sitting at the uh, house after I whipped that ass. Good one. Another one for Connor. Uh, th this is really the first time you've been in the same room with Dustin since Fight Island. Has seeing him in person now after all the back and forth on social media? I, I think he looks rough, to be honest. I look like the way coat is getting to him. And, you know, I can see it in his eyes. There's stress in his eyes, lack of sleep. You can see it. It's coming for him on Saturday night, and he knows it night now, and I'm going to love doing it. Dustin, same question. Is finally seeing Connor in person after all the back and forth on social media, has it elicited any more emotions or is it still just business as usual? No, it's just business. I see a man here. Oh, you a see man a that corpse. needs to get crazy. Oh, you see a dead buddy. Thank you. Go ahead. Hey, um... Hey, this question for Connor. Hey, 
a um, this question for Connor, this Ocho Cinco would be our betting. A um, quick question, myself and the entire BR betting family, we rocking with you Saturday night, and I want to hear from your mouth. Are you a lock? I'm a lock, a cert. I'm going to kill this man. Thank you. Go ahead, Robbie. Hi, Robbie. Barstool Sports over here. Question for Connor. Connor, we know you left the kids at home this time. Are they going to be watching on Saturday night, or are they not allowed to witness the violence you plan on delivering? The fight will be about 5 in the morning on Irish time, so the kids will be asleep. They'll watch it in the morning when they, when they wake. I love it. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Connor. Connor, when people think about you, they think about the guy who apologized to absolutely nobody. Is that guy here today, and will he be here on Saturday? An evolution of that guy. I'm better than that man, you know what I mean? I'm at the evolve, and I feel I'm at the come on full circle, and I look forward to showing it on Saturday night. Dustin. That night was the single greatest performance in UF history, widely regarded. The night I won the second world title in Madison Square Garden. This performance on Saturday night, I'm going to top it. Dustin. You're not just a contender anymore. You're a big deal in the entire UFC. How do you make sure you don't fall into the trap of falling into the hype? Because I've never really had that hype push. I know who I am. I'm the same guy. It's easy to be me, man. Question for the notorious Conor McGregor. You're already a Hall of Famer. Your legacy is already cemented. Winning against Dustin Poirier, winning this trilogy fight, where does it stack up against all the accomplishments? Beating Aldo, getting the champ champ status against Eddie Alvarez, where would this rank? My mindset, I'm back on the building sites now. I have a hard hat, a high vis, and two hammers in me hands. That's my mindset. I'm not relishing in all me past accomplishments, all the money I've got in me bank, all the Forbes accomplishments, all that. That's all, and I don't care about that. I'm back on the sites in a high vis with two hammers on me fucking hands. Out of curiosity, did you finish the bottle of hot sauce that Dustin gifted you on Fight Island? Didn't touch it. And Dustin, question for you. Winning this trilogy, would it be more meaningful than winning the interim lightweight strap at UFC 236 against Max Holloway? It'll be, I think, uh, bigger for the hype. Don't the contradict the yourself, Dustin, because the last time we were up here, you were giving it all the large ones, saying, oh, the title means everything. Yeah, here you are up for the, ch the bread and the butter, you little fake cunt. And then this is the last questions for both of you. You get your hand raised Saturday evening. How quickly would you like to return? Would you like to fight for this strap before the end of 20, 2021 against all of it? Yes, we're going to fill out the Allegiant Stadium, the Death Star. Yeah. For you, Dustin? Yeah, of course. That's the next move. End of the year. First question for Connor. Connor, they say that game recognizes game. When you look at Dustin, does he feel like he's on your level? Do you recognize him as a champ? Uh, he's not in the same stratosphere as me. The man looks disgraceful up here. He looks frail. He looks frail at this weight now. I'm telling you, his head, his body, his frame, his eyes, that weight cut is getting to him. I'm on weight ready to go. There'll be no 155. There'll be no, nothing free given here. Everything's getting took here. Second question for Dustin. You entered the UFC as a young fighter. Now you're a wise businessman. What's that journey been like for you to be entering the fight game, but now in the business game? It's been a lot of growth, you know, learning from, from losses in life and in, from, uh, in fighting. So just getting better. My wife is your husband. Last question for Dana. What's it feel like to have fans in the house in Las Vegas? Yeah, no, it's good to be back home. It's awesome. This question's for Connor. Connor, in the build-up to the last fight, you were unusually kind to Dustin. Now on fight week, it's the exact opposite. So when did that switch happen? Because he got knocked the fuck out.
Not McGregor fast, McGregor sleep. And Dustin, in this week, Connor said that in the last fight that you fought him scared. I just want to get your reaction to that. What'd you say? Connor said this week that you fought him scared in the last fight. I just want to get your reaction to that. I have a healthy fear going into every fight. I know the, uh, the dangers. I know I'm a human being, and if I make a mistake, it could be the last mistake in that fight, and I could wake up asking what happened. So I bring that into every fight. And last one for Dana. Uh, earlier this week, we heard about Nick Diaz versus Robbie Lawler. Do you have an update on that fight? I said it's something we're working on for September. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Question for Connor. Connor, win or lose, do you respect Dustin Poirier no matter what happens on Saturday night? I don't give a fuck about him, to be honest. I don't give a rat's ass about him. He's Buster Douglas. He's Buster Douglas is what he is. And that's the way he's going to go down. He's going to be known for that. It was a fluke win, and I'm going to correct it on Saturday night. Dustin, the same question for you. Because you, do you respect him as a fighter despite all of the antics? I do. You know, I don't hate anybody up here. I'm at a different place mentally, man. Respect to him and everything he's done. Question for Dana. Is this a return to form? Is this Connor look very familiar to you versus the one that you saw in Abu Dhabi? That's me. What's the yeah. question? Does this Conor McGregor look I'm more so familiar? fucking freaked out that these two are going to move either way. I can't even... He's not going to do nothing. I can't even nothing. pay attention to this fucking... Just keep sketch on me, because that little fool will do nothing. I'm going to slap you up if you come near me. What did you say, sir? Does this look more familiar to you than what you saw in Abu Dhabi with Conor? Uh, yeah. yeah. Listen, you know, I, I think that every version of Conor that's shown up over the last several years is always a different version. Um, you know... He, 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 he does what he's got to do. Who's next? Is that it? Connor, right here. Connor, right down here. Connor, question for you. You have won exactly one fight since Barack Obama was president. Put your mouth or go down and smash your nose. Connor, over the fighter, smash your nose. Over the last rat. six fights, your little rabbit thing. Someone this smack man him. sent smack you him. to a place where time doesn't exist six months ago. We want to know why should anyone expect anything different on Saturday? It's one more. It's Look, one more fight I won than your little sissy ass, your little funny pad. Why should we expect? Anything different on Saturday? Connor, in all sincerity, why would it be any different on Saturday? He said he's just putting his hammers on, his hard hat. My boots been strapped for the last 10 years. I've been working my ass off. For... Thank you. Question, question for Connor. Uh, you know, despite your feelings towards Dustin, Habib, and Nate, do you still think it's important to have a strong rival to, you know, help you get better and establish a legacy? Yeah, fuck the whole roster. Fuck the entire roster. You know, I see the way it is. You try and be nice to them. You try and help them out out of pity. But fuck them all now. It is what it is, and that's it. I'm coming for all of them. And uh, D Dustin, do you think it's important to have a strong rival as well? Do what? It's important to have a strong rival, do you think? All these guys are rivals. You know, we're competing to be the number one fighter. And a question for Dana. Connor mentioned Allegiant Stadium. You know, we're getting back to the T-Mobile Arena, but is there any hope to get the Allegiant soon? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming someday we'll have a fight that we'll put over there. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, what happens this weekend and uh, throughout the rest of this year. Question for Connor. I'm curious, you've been talking a lot about legacy. How much would a trilogy fight with Nate Diaz interest you? It's for sure gonna happen. It must happen. Well, one on one, it must happen. It will happen. I look forward to the day. And for Dustin, since being over at AT&T, you and Mike Brown really have developed a solid relationship. How much do you credit him for becoming the fighter that you are today? 
He's helped out a lot in my growth and my, uh, you know, my, my evolution as a mixed martial artist, combining everything, my, my kickboxing with my wrestling, my jiu-jitsu. He's a great guy to have in your corner. And last thing for me, for Connor, just to go Louisiana back. wasn't good enough for you, was it? You left Louisiana, it wasn't up to scratch to get you the way you needed to be, was it? For Connor, what else do you feel you still have to accomplish? You already were a simultaneous two division title champ. What else do you have on your radar to accomplish? Strainers, scraps, fights. That's what I love to do. It's what I do, I've been doing my entire life. And that's it, you know, more mega fights. Why are you guys reaching out to uh, people in the boxing world that I know, trying to bring in boxing uh, expertise? Shoot you your mouth. <laughs> Why are you guys reaching out to my friends to bring into camp? What? Why reach out to no one yet? Hick, I played in Spark, Paulie Malinagi and Spartan in the lead up to Foy Floyd, one of the better boxers on this fucking planet, you stupid tosspot. We never rang anyone to ask anyone for any, any blading info on you, you do We both did the same to you. Uh, Go question, ahead, sir. Question, question for Connor. So, Connor, uh, the lack of trash talk last time around made things easier for Dustin, he said. But can you regain an intimidation factor after losing it? How do you regain a psychological edge? Don't give a bollocks about all that. Lock me in the cage with him. You're going to see what's happening. For, for Dustin, so you knew the trash talk was coming this time around. How do you prepare for that? I don't. I just don't care about this stuff anymore. I don't care about this. Okay. And for Dana, how much do you appreciate the back and forth as a promoter? It doesn't matter one way or the other to me, you know. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Team Z Sports. Connor, congrats on making the cover of Forbes. Um, Thank you so much. How long until you're a billionaire? By the time I'm 35, I'm 32 now. 35, okay. You, you'll be 33 next week. Do you want the boss, Dana, to get you anything for your birthday? No, I have everything I need. I have everything I need. Everything need. D Dustin. Connor tweeted about, you know, first want to take a shot as a weasel. Are you going to stand and bang, or are you going to take a shot? I'm going to shell and shoot. Have a good night. All right, so, so guys, hey. Forrest Griffin has a question here that was sent in by the fans. All right, thank you, guys. Gentlemen, uh, I have the fans decided question from Socios app. And that question is, I'll start with you, Dustin. What is the worst part of fight camp and what is the best part of fight camp? Uh, the worst part is probably for me, at the end of camp, my body's hurting. You know, I've been doing it for nine weeks in a row and I'm ready for the fight to be here. That, that final last two weeks of camp, getting to this, this week is, is the roughest. Well, I, and what's the best part? I have a feeling I know. I love the beginning of camp. I love the beginning of camp, getting back with the guys in the gym, uh, feeling good. Thank you, thank you. Connor, same question to you. I love, the, I love it all. There's not one bit of it I hate. I love every bit of it. From the start to the middle to the finish, to gearing up to right now here at the press after, to, to the way in tomorrow and to the fight on Saturday night. I absolutely love it all. Absolutely. The best part of any fight camp is the actual fight. That is the correct answer. All right, we got time for one last question. Go ahead, sir. Dustin, Connor in interviews this week said, he admits he was looking past you in the second fight, looking more at Manny Pacquiao. Do you look at that as an excuse, and do you feel like you got the best of what was left of him in that fight? I beat him. I mean, it, it's a fight. It's up to you to get prepared. I beat him. What's his excuse going to be on Saturday is what I want to know. Connor, history has shown when you are active, you are sharper. Do you think you'll look back on this five-year stretch and regret only fighting three times in your prime? I regret nothing I've done on this planet. You know, as long as I live, I, I love my life. I've done some incredible things, and, you know, I've had an incredible career, and long may it continue. Connor, should we expect you to check calf kicks this fight? Don't, you'll pay to see that. And finally, Connor, I've watched all your interviews this week. 
It seems like you've been hesitant to give the official Mystic Mac prediction for this one. Can you go on record right now? Oh, here? I said I'm gonna take him out in a stretcher. He's going out in a stretcher in this fight. What round, sir? You'll pay to see that. Thank you. All right, we're gonna get the stuff out of here and square these guys off for uh, face off. Thank you, we'll see you at the weigh-ins tomorrow. <laughs>